Well, here we are again, the No Emotion podcast, and it might as well be called the Black Swan and Crypto Lulu podcast at this point, because we always have Vasan on. We still haven't had Vandel on. I still haven't met Vandel, um, but it will happen for sure. He seems seems like a busy at the times where you're free and you're busy when he's free kind of thing. Um, <laughs> but thank you for coming yet again. I'm sure it's going to be a, another good conversation. Of course. Uh, lots to go over in this one. Where would you like to start? Yeah, no, um, there's so much to talk about. You know, the the thing I've been really focusing on for the last few weeks, this is very interesting, is um, I'd like to give a very brief, quick history lesson to a few people out there. Um, now, this is stuff I normally would not share and talk about publicly, but I've been researching a lot very closely into something called the Jesuits. I don't know if many people know who the Jesuits are. They are also known from the Roman Catholic Vatican. Uh, so it turns out in my research, and this is going to be very brief, but I'm actually discovering that the Vatican and the Jesuits order were the ones who initially implemented the central bank in the United States. And it was their plan, right, to enable them to wage war with that central bank as the American empire expanded. And once that was completely accomplished, the people would own nothing, worthless paper, and basically the Jesuits would still be able to wage war and, uh, you know, as the Americans uh, continue to expand and wage war across the world, but destroying the middle class. I just found that very interesting. I'm still in the middle of my research, but um, this is where I'm at personally, um, trying to uncover everything else that we've been learning and talking about here. So that's rabbit hole topic. One day we can get more into. But. Well, so what's the what's the conclusion you're drawing from that? <clears throat> Really, that the Jesuits, the, the Roman Vatican, is behind everything we're seeing. And most people would not believe that. Most people wouldn't understand it. They wouldn't know where to start looking. But I'm not kidding, man. You, you really sink your teeth into this beyond BlackRock, beyond uh, the World Health Organization, the CDC, Bill Gates. You find out that they're all part of the Jesuit order. Anyone can go look this stuff up. Um, it's going to be hard to find... Uh, Chat GPT would not help you with this. Okay, so don't try asking Chat GPT. They're saying that the Roman Catholic Church is good for the world, and you find out that really the the Vatican, you know, is behind a lot of the stuff that we're seeing here. And this could be, you know, into ushering this one world government under the Pope, even. And I know that sounds crazy, but we're in the very early stages still. But anyways, oh, so, so. you're saying that the this Jesuit, I guess, plan is coming to fruition if, even from all that time ago yes absolutely and you know this is something i'm very interesting i would also like to um, share is basically you know the world right now um human beings are under the control of a very strange force that is somehow bending us in many absurd ways and without us even realizing it but this force is also forcing us to all play a role in a bizarre game of deception it's just really crazy. So, yeah. <laughs> Anyways, that's my research. But, you know, um, there are more important things we can certainly talk about. So, well, yeah, we, we can uh, talk about something that I heard today, actually, which I think everyone might be quite excited about. Mm. Um, I was on a I'm going to try and get you an interview with this guy because I think you two would get along so well. It's uh, his name's Charlie Ward. And he's oh. on, he's on, uh, he's on Rumble because he says things that get you cancelled. <laughs> um, yeah, but I was on his show this morning, and he's a precious metals guy. He's an expert in that field, very, very well connected. Dropped a few names in our conversation after the interview had finished. That I just thought, what? <laughs> how, how are you mingling with these types of people? And he shared with me stories about people telling him about XRP in like like one of them i don't know how much i can say I, i'm not going to say anything but he was told by pretty high up people forget mm -hmm. about all the other assets forget about real estate three letters xrp that's literally what he was told seven years ago um and so uh he was telling me when we were talking about backing currency with gold or whatever it back is backed with he said there is actually already a plan for what the asset is or assets are 
uh, that will be backed and what they will be backed by. And I mentioned you in the interview because of your interview with Simon Hunt. Mm -hmm. Simon Hunt said the the currency will be backed not by just gold, but by a basket of probably 20 commodities is what Mm -hmm. he said, right? Yes. So here's a little bit of information he told me. He said the United Arab Emirates will have a CBDC. Their CBDC will be backed by oil. Interesting. The United Kingdom will have the British pound, the digital pound, and it will be backed not by gold, by sterling silver. Mm. Uh, Uganda will have their CBDC, and it will be backed by diamonds. So when he was telling me all of this, I was thinking, this is what Simon Hunt said, Mm -hmm. a basket of commodities that is superior to gold, because what you want when you back an asset is you want it to stabilize, that the point of backing it is to stabilize it. Yes, absolutely. So what's stronger than stabilizing it with gold, stabilizing it with all of the commodities? Makes sense, yes. Um, Uh, And so individual CBDCs, it seems, will be backed by these individual commodities. Yeah. You know, you know, it's very interesting. First of all, Charlie Ward, wonderful person. I've been following this gentleman for a very long time, and I would love the opportunity to speak with him. In fact, we were trying to find his email. We could not find it. Um, so this is where it gets interesting, though. See, pegging commodities towards cryptocurrencies, right? It would certainly involve the linking of the value of that token to the value of the physical commodity, right? So this would mean each unit of, uh, for instance, XRP would have to be, or I'm sorry, a cryptocurrency. Let's not say XRP. I'm not trying to get Matt Hamilton. I'm so tired of those Twitter tantrums. I don't have time for that stuff, but let me explain. Basically, in this case, the, the cryptocurrency would have to be backed by a certain amount of gold, for instance, right? Which would certainly provide a level of stability and confidence for investors to use that currency. So the process of pegging commodities to uh, cryptocurrencies would certainly involve, um, you'd have to have some sort of trusted third party, such as a gold custodian, for instance, or a commodity custodian, or a central authority, like a central bank. How come all the central banks are buying up the gold? It's very interesting, right? Anyways. But basically, whoever would hold that physical um, commodities would certainly issue those digital tokens that represent the ownership of that commodity. So these digital tokens, in other words, then could be used to be um, to back the value of that token. You see what I mean? And such a system would certainly benefit everybody, including it it would also bring stability, uh, inclusion and uh, transparency and It would certainly also make, uh, for instance, these cryptos or these blockchain protocols that are packed and pegged to physical commodities more attractive for investors who are looking for a safe haven as well. So uh, there are so many things that can play into this. But, you know, to basically to what they're saying is the, the concept of a digital gold standard, and that's the video I made, but a digital commodity standard, if we were to do that, right, pegging, right? It's using blockchain technology, by the way, it's very exciting. It's a powerful idea, and it has the potential to revolutionize the global economy. And there, again, there are so many reasons I can explain this, right? But again, a lot of these technical gurus out there, they simply are looking at one side of the story, but they're not looking at the other side of the story, which is the central banks, the monetary policy, what the banks are doing, what the institutions are doing. They're only covering one side of everything. No wonder they don't have an understanding. No wonder there's so much confusion in the space. And I don't care. I put the thoughts out there. I put the things out there. And if people want to digest it the way they do, that's amazing, man. Only a few people, I think, are going to understand entirely what's happening here because this is like like in the movie The Matrix. The guy said, you have to see it for yourself. And I'm serious about that. I can, no matter how many times I try to explain to people what I'm seeing and what I'm feeling and what I sense and what I know and my intuition and based on research I've done, you cannot share the same experience with somebody. They have to go and do their own due diligence and understand what they are reading and looking at. And guess what? Once you get both sides of the story, and I've said this many times on your show too, they will have a clear understanding of what is transitioning and how to position themselves accordingly.
Exactly. Um, and I think talking about people who are very one-sided, the, the, the thing that I'm thinking about is when we make this transition to the new financial system, it's a new financial system, new. Like mm. the things that exist there don't exist now. So if you're unable to think outside the box, if you think, well, the IMF can't do this, we're not talking about right now. We're talking about, like, for example, this whole asset, gold asset backing thing. Um, currently, as it stands, there is no entity in place to have physical custodianship or to represent the, the holding of the physical gold, for example, for the globe. Right. There is no entity right now because that we're not gold backed. We don't have that thing in system. We don't have a one world currency right now. So we don't have that entity. But when we move into the new financial system and it's basically a given that all the BRICS nations are going to be backed by um, gold or at least Russia and China will. Mm. Um, when we have that one world currency that lies underneath everything, which we believe would be XRP, sure, maybe there's some XLM in there for, for different purposes, whatever. Um, it's not really that important. But when that happens, there will need to be an entity above the IMF, above the BIS, above all of it, to, to set that regulatory framework in on a global scale. And when I asked Charlie Ward this, he said there is a thing. And Did I said, oh, right, things? there is something. And he said, yes, it's called a gold bullion exchange. Interesting. These gold bullion exchanges will, in his opinion, supersede. They will they will act as the custodians of the gold and ultimately yeah. become the the top, the top shelf people. Um, and I'm mm -hmm. sure there will be a, a diamond exchange that holds the diamonds and then everyone else or the central banks hold representations of the diamonds that they hold. And I'm sure there'll be all kinds of ways that it weaves in, but the new system will have that higher level that we haven't got right now. So if we need an asset to be stable, to be backed by gold, to make it more stable, yes, that doesn't necessarily apply right now, but it will. <laughs> that's, the, that's, oh. the, that's the thing people are struggling to understand. Of course, but this is something also people need to understand is that, and I've said this before, I, I think we're still early in this space. I know it's been a while since the inception of Bitcoin, right? But we're, we're still early in the space. We I think we're getting closer to having some sort of regulatory framework to understand really what is transitioning, how is this going to look like for other people to prepare and position themselves accordingly, right? I think they've left breadcrumbs everywhere for us to catch on to, right? A lot of us are really eating these breadcrumbs and trying to get a piece of the bigger picture here. What's how, how this is going to play out, but it's not crazy at all to even to visualize such a concept. It's not, you know, overall, even, um, I mean, we know everything's going digital. There has to be, there's going to have to be some sort of standard. And I also, you know, that's where ISO ties into all of this. Really, it's just a messaging standard for now interoperability between these new technologies that are putting this new vision for the future in place, right? We're going there. We just don't understand what exactly the transition is going to look like, but it's pretty simple. It's de-dollarization. Basically, the world is moving away from dollars and we're going back to a commodity back system, base system, something like that. And people say, oh, well, the central banks lose control if we go back to a gold standard. Well, maybe that's the plan, right? Or maybe the banks are slowing the, the lawsuit down even, for instance, in order to create an environment where it's profitable for themselves too. Then they can adopt this. Or they could be even trying to replicate the technology. And that's what I've heard before. And they failed many times. And now they're saying, okay, well, we kind of have to go through this. There are so many factors that are playing out right now, right? It's crazy. But in my opinion... I still believe, again, Charlie Ward slightly confirmed this. We are going to have some sort of commodity-backed system. In my opinion, man, a digital gold standard using blockchain technology is not only possible, it also can bring so many benefits to the global economy, again, building increased transparency, security, and accessibility to all. And that's how it should be, by the way. Yeah, so. and, and I think... I, I, had a th I don't even know how realistic what I'm about to say is, but it seems logical. You have CBDCs, then 
you back your CBDCs by whatever country you're in's uh, most valuable commodity, hmm. then those CBDCs and, and their backing of a commodity that backs them are backed hmm. by XRP, like XRP being the backed, the backing currency. Yes, it's, uh, it's a set value. If you think about it, if you if you think it was gold, for example, let's replace XRP with the word gold. Okay. There's a set amount of gold. You can't mine any more than there is. Like there is just an amount of gold in the earth, right? You can't make more gold. It's just there's an amount. Some of it we don't know where it is. Um, there, there's still some remaining in the ground, little dust, just like in in cold wallets or wherever wallets. But you know, there's so much. There's a finite amount on Earth. Mm -hmm. It's made to be. It's a stable. It's that's that makes it stable because there is no more. So if you put XRP in that same position, hypothetically, because it's you can't add more XRP, it could be treated as the asset that backs assets. Well, this is very interesting. I mean, we have to also look at when we talk about XRP, there are so many people that still don't understand what is happening in this XRP space. The protocol, Ripple protocol is being implemented to every financial institution globally, whether they are talking about it publicly or not. If you dig enough, it's there, guys, okay? It is there. Now, we have to understand also that XRP, the digital asset, is the heartbeat of what makes Ripple and the Ripple protocol so innovative for the financial industry, right? This also can tie into why we talk about the price of XRP being so high. Now, I want to make this very clear to people, okay? I don't like to make predictions on these kind of things. But if I was to guess the price of XRP, I would say that if once we have the regulation and the institutional utility later on down the road, which is coming, guys, it's going to take some time, though. I can easily see, again, XRP being in the hundreds of thousands of dollars, and I'll gladly explain why. Again, this ties back to what we were talking about. If the global economy is being positioned to be tokenized or digitized, whatever you want to call it, on the XRP ledger, and that's basically what we are seeing happening all over the world, no one's talking enough about it. If that's the case, which it is, then the demand for XRP would be enormous on a global scale by financial institutions. Therefore, the price would have to be high enough to maintain the liquidity that it is needed to facilitate those transactions on a global scale. So ladies and gentlemen, again, yes, the XRP price to truly serve the global economy like it was originally designed to do, the price would have to be very, very high. I hope that makes sense too. But it ties into everything we're talking about here. So, you know, XRP is going to be the face of the new financial system. And I know that for a fact. Ripple do you, is would you think of it more as being, do you think it actually is going to be the face? Like, will people know what Ripple is? Yes. I, I kind Ripple. of feel like they don't, they won't. Oh, it's coming. We're early. We are. No, early. I know. I know. I know it's coming. But I'm, I'm, when I think of people, I think mm -hmm. of sheeple and Massive. I think of people who go to, they go to the shops, like just tap their card and buy their buy their stuff. No idea what goes on. Yes, and so I don't think Ripple or XRP is going to be known to those people. Probably not XRP, but I think at some point Ripple will be the household name for the financial system because they, if you're gonna if you're gonna make the financial system and rebuild it, they're not rebuilding it entirely from scratch. What have they done? They just put the Ripple protocol on the payment rails of the traditional financial banking system. That's it. People like to complicate the whole thing. It's not that complicated. They put that on there, but the heartbeat for this payment system to work is called XRP. You see what I mean? So if that's the case, then. Most people probably in the future, it's like right now, a lot of people know what gold is, but how many people own it? Mm. No one. Most people don't own gold. I don't know anyone that owns gold besides some of my very close friends. And they still don't have a clear picture of the entire financial system the way I do. My point, though, is that at some point, the name Ripple will be known by everybody, in my opinion. It will have to be known. This is the one who's facilitating the liquidity globally to all the financial systems in the world. Okay. 
Something else I'd like to talk about is central bank digital currencies. I think there's also some misunderstanding there. What is a central bank digital currency, right? I want to clarify that for people. Central bank digital currencies, we already know this, that they are issued and regulated by the central banks, meaning that they have the complete control over that currency that they supply you and the circulation of it, by the way. So it's centrally controlled and can potentially lead, of course, to issues such as inflation, surveillance, restricted access to certain individuals or groups. This is 100% control. And I've said this, uh, I put this in a tweet also the other day, but by owning decentralized technologies such as XRP, such as XLM, and there are other technologies out there, right? They, they can certainly help you and protect you from becoming a slave to a central bank digital currency. Now, I find that very interesting, but by offering an alternative decentralized financial approach to the system that's not controlled by a single entity, you know, you can still safeguard your financial sovereignty. Um, CBDCs are certainly a threat to everything we believe in, guys. So, you know, I just had to throw that out there, man. I think that's very serious. <laughs> yeah, I think the the CBDCs, they, they are, I think they're still figuring out. I, I think I feel like it's too early for the narrative they want to spin. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. the narrative they want to spin about the surveillance worries, the surveillance fears, um, is that they want to say, well, if we have a, a lockdown or, a, or a, another pandemic, we'll be able to stimulate the economy by forcing you all to basically, we'll give you money and you'll spend it. And that's a good thing. I just think we're not there yet. Well, I don't think we're ready for that type of... And, yes. and I think that's why also, partly why the, the regulations for these retail CBDCs can't actually, or the, or the actually, actual use of these CBDCs can't be put in place really until post-2025. Because so I think there's still some time required yes. to mold the narrative. I don't think they're clear on it yet. There's a lot, like I said, breadcrumbs where we're trying our best people like you and I sharing this information, putting it out there for the masses to somehow figure this out for themselves too. Right. But this is a, a red flag. If this is what they're thinking about and planning. And I don't know if people have seen the, the world economic forum, um, the Davos group and what they publicly talk about. They're talking about 100% control and using climate change as a, as a scapegoat to get away with that, by the way. Yeah. But this is where it gets interesting. Why would we need a central bank digital currency? For example, maybe so that the financial crisis that's engineered, by the way, does not happen again. So it's a solution, you know, but it's disguised by the way. But this is also where it gets important to understand why central bank digital currencies are not far from coming into fruition. I'll explain. It's because of inflation. Inflation is the silent enemy of the middle class including myself, ladies and gentlemen, I am, the inflation is killing my business, guys, okay? It's slowly eroding the value of my hard-earned money and jeopardizing my financial security and future. I want people to understand how serious I, that is. As the inflation gets worse, right? Goods and services are gonna continue to rise. Uh, purchasing power of the middle class continues to diminish until you have nothing. Kind of ties into what I said about the Jesuits, by the way, but it becomes difficult to afford the basic necessities to survive. And we're almost there, guys. We really are. How many people can afford healthcare? How many people can actually get the assistance they need and now go to the grocery store and pay for the same damn goods they were paying last year? $100 less. Unacceptable. The inflation is engineered for a reason, and it's going to have a ripple effect, no pun intended, okay, on the entire global economy. But that's going to lead to higher interest rates, which will reduce customers, uh, consumer spending, which means more businesses will suffer, and lower economic growth. However, we see at the same time the rise of today's artificial intelligence. What do you think chat GPT will be in about a year from now, by the way? I'll give you an example. Artificial intelligence, right? I promise you, it's going to change the employment landscape moving on from 2023 and beyond. As machines become more advanced and capable, more people are going to get dumber 
And I, and I don't mean it in a negative way too, but at the same time, more jobs that were done by humans now will be replaced with computers. They'll be automated. My point though is the inflation, the climate change, the um, the same time, the, the transition to digital assets. It's the holy trinity, man. You see, it's all falling into place for a reason to issue a central bank digital currency to the masses that can no longer afford to uh, be valuable to the society or even survive because they can't afford the goods and services they need. It's not an accident. Everything is falling into place for central bank digital currencies to be issued to people. That way they can control the narrative. Hey, you you said uh, screw Biden and his policies. Well, I'm going to turn off your wallet. Now no one will say it. You see what I'm talking about? Yeah. I don't understand people. They need to wake up, man. And I'm serious. Yeah. I know we're too awake, but <laughs> and we're not woke. We're awake. No, no, no. <laughs> Very big difference, guys. Right? Yeah. Uh, so, my so opinion awake, it's hard to sleep. destroys the body, mind, and soul. So don't fall for that crap. Anyways, mm. you know. <laughs> it's a lot to talk about, but it's all tying in together. And I think um, a lot of the people, even in the crypto space, they're, they're very young people. They're smart. Um, they want to learn. They want to engage. They want to make profits like all of us do. But I think they need to also take a good look at, you know, asking questions like, why is this happening? Sometimes it's important. Look what I'm doing right now. I have studied the financial system in and out. I've tried my best to share my opinions with people. But guess what? I've gotten to a point where I understand so much about it. I'm actually shifting my own research in my own personal time towards the Vatican now. You see, I'm Jesuit order and I'm trying to find other pieces of the puzzle. My point though is that people can look into this stuff. Anyway. Yeah. And it's all, it's all there. It's all there. It's just, it's real tough to get into it. But once you're in a flow, once you're in a, like that, that flow state of the research, which many of the people in the community are like some of the research that's been contributed to what well, given to me, that it's been mind blowing. So I do think people have been really getting switched on. It just takes takes time with all of that stuff. I want to go back to the 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 price prediction element of it because someone again, someone in the community posed a really really interesting question to me, and that was about I'm going to say BlackRock, but people don't get angry that I'm saying BlackRock. I'm just saying it as a and as as an example. I think everyone knows that word by now. It's just easy to say. Yes. When we're talking about me and you, when we buy crypto, when we buy XRP, let's say, we know that we can't buy enough XRP to shift the price. Of course not. However, there are entities that know exactly their power. There are entities like BlackRock that have mm -hmm. $10 trillion in assets. Mm-hmm who, for example, if they tokenized their assets and it ran through the XRP ledger, would they not have an exact price that XRP would likely go to if they tokenized and put all that value onto the ledger that they know they have? They would hypothetically be able to calculate the price and therefore tokenize all their assets buy on the secondary market and make an insane profit regardless of the price. If they know that their assets take the XRP price to $1,000, for example, mm -hmm. just tokenizing their assets, they can buy at $10, $100, and, $1,000 and not make, they, they wouldn't lose all the way up to $1,000 buying an XRP. Yes. So it's a massive profit in yes. that transition to tokenize. So the opportunity is not just there for BlackRock, it's for everyone to make that profit. Maybe they've also talked about it together. What if we tokenize all of our assets? What would the price be then? You know, real quick, I, I've said this also before, there, there are a number of reasons why it's going to be the institutional utility that's going to be a game changer for XRP and the price, okay? Uh, institutions tend to have deeper pockets and much more substantial resources than you and I do, right? So if they started, for instance, using XRP, and that's, again, not even tokenizing, just using XRP to cross-border uh, for cross-border transactions, right? For example, 
uh, that would certainly drive up the demand for the the crypto itself. And uh, which would certainly push the price higher, but also it would get other institutions to follow that trend now, right? Uh, which means it would go even higher and higher. There are so many reasons why the price of XRP will be skyrocketing later on. But I'm going to tell you right now, it's really, it's going to be the institutions that are going to drive the price of XRP up. I think we talked about this before, a um, long time ago, I think two years or a year ago, my brother shared this with me, but there were a bunch of people on the Twitter community who got together and they all had an agreement to purchase a significant amount of XRP in order to see if the price would go up. And you're not going to believe it. When they made the purchase, the price of XRP actually went down. So the, the price of XRP is being held back, guys. It is being manipulated. It, I'm not saying we're not going to talk about these damn ledgers again. OK, but the price of XRP is being manipulated whether it's through nodes, whether it's through the SEC, whether it's through anyone, okay, halting the price back, or even bots. They use trade bots on Bitcoin to do the same damn thing, but to make it look like there's more value going on when really less than 20% of it is retail money. It's all fake. And that's why anyone who's foolish enough to buy into Bitcoin is going to pay the price later on. And that's a point, guys. And I'm kidding. I'm not kidding about that. So... You know, the price of XRP, again, will run to astronomical levels once there's the real institutional utility in there. You know, so I again, I, I said that earlier, but the price could certainly be in the hundreds of thousands of dollars. In my opinion, later on down the road, once we have regulatory clarity, transparency and institutional utility. OK, again, we're talking about tokenizing the global economy. If that's the case, we're talking about a lot of money, guys. We're talking about the global economy. OK. That includes stocks, derivatives, insurance, et cetera. You know, I can go on and on, real estate. So everything you see and touch. Yeah. And guess what? There is an incentive by the central banks and the powers that be to control everything. And that has to be digital. A banker's dream is a cashless society. Once everything's digital, they are in control. That's it. Few people will get rich from this transition because we're paying attention. And that's the truth. Most people would get wiped out because this new system does not work without eradicating the middle class. And that initially, that design came from the Jesuit order, by the way. Now, I'm not kidding. <laughs> there we go. Well, that was full circle from right at the beginning all the way to the end. I think we've run out of time today, Vasan, but I know for sure it won't be the last time we do a podcast. It won't be the last time we talk. I'm sure we'll see each other in person again soon as well. It's always um, a pleasure to speak with you, dear and friend. No, you too. Um, I think everyone on my channel is familiar with your channel, but if you are new on this channel and you haven't subscribed to Black Swan Capitalist, you basically have to. <laughs> I think I think everyone in my community is in agreement that it's a great channel to follow. Um, and the the content that's put out on Versan's channel, Black Swan Capitalist, is top tier. Um, so make sure you go and do that. It gives a holistic approach on gold, the banking system. Um some of it is a little bit exciting to watch, like the almost the conspiratorial side of things, which is fun to watch, um, but not too deep. Um, and then obviously your beloved XRP. So thank you again, Vasan. And uh, we'll talk again soon. You got it, brother. I'll see you later. Yeah.